just want to say that I feel that So after last week's video, a lot of you commented that you wanted to see a farm tour. So I'm going to take you through, show you what's blooming now mid-August. And I also, so we're at our home farm right now. I'm going to take you over to the other plot of land that we farm on because I'll show you this a little bit later giant progress on the upcoming high tunnel install. Very, very excited about that. And today's video is sponsored by Cricut. We're gonna be working on some organization of my farmer's market trailer. So I'm finally working on getting like the takedown for the farmer's market organized. So it's gonna be so much quicker, but let's get into it with our flower farm tour for summer 2022. So right behind where I was sitting, we are on the old Peony Hill. I had to take out the peonies and replant them into landscape fabric because last year there was just so, so much weeds. So if you've been subscribed for a while, this is my beehive. It hasn't moved, but these beautiful foxglove, they are just in full bloom right now. Behind them is where I moved all of the peonies. So just so, 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 so many. They are definitely a bit weedy, but they are looking super healthy. So I should go through and, you know, I need to weed around all the little holes in the landscape fabric. But overall, um, I'm pretty happy. I'm going to hit them with another dose of fish fertilizer as soon as I can get these weeds cleared up. I don't want to boost the weeds, but I'm really happy with how well these guys have transplanted and they're putting on some good growth. I did get a few blooms off of these this year, but they were only in year two and I had just moved them. So year three is really when you're gonna start seeing blooms on your peony plants. So next spring, I think is going to be very, very good for these guys. Something that grows pretty wild up here on our farm is this yarrow, this cottage yarrow. It is doing fantastic. We've got just little bits of it here and there and everywhere. Over here, I've got some mint that's finally starting to, to fill out some sedum. These guys aren't quite in bloom or anything, but exciting to see a new planting taking off. And then this is kind of, we've got our chickens over here if you hear them squawking away, but this is kind of the tail end of my Iceland poppies. They're starting to fade, starting to get a little bit old, um, but this one is really at the perfect stage. The little, um, the little cap just fell off of it. So this is perfectly where I cut them. They're just such a pretty like tissue paper bloom. I love them. I know they're so fragile, but I love Iceland poppies. Between the chickens and my framers just got here that are working on our house, it's pretty loud. So we're gonna go over, I wanna show you the market trailer really quick that I'm gonna organize. And then I wanted to, to show you this project. My goal is to get this done in 20 minutes or less. Um, when it comes to organization, I think a lot of times we feel like it can take you know, we don't do a project because we feel like it's going to take a long time, but it really doesn't have to. So I'll, I'll bring you along for that. Let me show you the trailer first. So here's the market trailer. Back here, I've got these three bins. These are what I need to label. And it doesn't seem like when everything is all put away like this, how we take it home, it doesn't seem like it's that unorganized, except for at takedown. When these bins are sitting there and they don't have like a clear label, like I want to put one here on the side, when they are not clearly labeled, as soon as you put a lid on it, they get mixed up with all the other bins that I bring. We don't know, okay, which one is for signs, which one's for the weights and the sides of the tent, which one's for drink stuff. It gets so confusing. And normally we're bringing probably eight of these containers and it just gets so mixed up each time. So I think this is really going to help us out for takedown and making it so much more of a quick process. Okay, so we are upstairs and I just cleaned the bins. They're all ready to go. I wanna do this project in 30 minutes or less. I know I can do it. Um, and I wanna walk you guys through it. Today's video is sponsored by Cricut. So I'm gonna be using my Cricut Maker 3 and just really simple materials. I've showed you guys so many different projects on this channel that I've done with the Cricut. They're just so quick and easy. And the thing that I like, like I could just do these with like a masking tape and Sharpie or something but they're gonna look terrible. And these will be sitting behind my booth every single market for everyone to see. So I want them to look nice. So I'm gonna use the premium vinyl. I'm just gonna use white. I want it to kind of look like, you know, we've got a black bin. It'll be like chalkboard writing, that kind of look. I've got some transfer tape and I'm just gonna open up Cricut Design Space. This is how basically you design anything you wanna do with your Cricut machine. You design it in the free design space. It comes with your machine. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start with a new project. And this one's so easy, I'm just doing some text. I'm gonna change the font here. I kinda like this Futura 
condensed. And then I have in mind doing three different labels. So I wanna do, one is for like cups, another one is for signs, and the last one is for our tent weights. I can spell it. And I did measure, we've got probably about five inches for this one and then six inches I can use for the other side. So when I do that, I just kind of measure them up in the design space. There's rulers, you can go about five inches on those and then I'm gonna copy and paste. And then this one, I'll be able to make a little bit wider. So these can drag to six inches. It's so easy. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and cut out my materials. So I've got my white vinyl. I don't know where my longer mat is. This one is 12 inches. So I'm just gonna cut it and then I'm gonna make sure my design only goes to 12 inches. Once I've got everything how I like it, I just click make it. And then it's going to sort everything out we're gonna use it on a mat, continue. Go ahead and get the machine powered up. And then for materials, we're using the permanent vinyl. To go ahead and line it up underneath, flashing button. And there we go. So it's going to do its own thing. Um, I'm actually going to grab this tool here. It's called the weeder. And this is what you use once it's got all of the cuts out. If you have any letters like an A that has a little circle in the middle, you just use this little thing to prick it out. And then I use the transfer tape. This is like a clear, almost just like a tape that helps pick up your design. And I'll use this to get the design off of the mat and onto the project. While I'm waiting, it won't be very long, but I wanted to show you guys some of the flowers that I had recently. These are some of the rejects, some of the shorties and ones that I didn't use recently. I just bring them all inside because I can't let them go to waste. <laughs> this is a queen lime, uh, I think, believe it's a red, queen lime red zinnia. Got some rudbeckia. They're just so cheery and fun. Zinnias, lime zinnia. And this is basil, oh my gosh. Oh, and this is a um, nigella. It's also called Love in a Mist. And I love how these are just such a little twinkle flower. And this is what they look like when they're like in the pod, like I should say before they bloom in the bud. And then they open up and they look like that. So pretty. So it's already done. I don't know if you can see the letters cut out. The Cricut is just, it's such a fast and easy way to make things custom that you wouldn't necessarily, you know, be able to, I don't know, make look cute, I guess. I labeled the kids laundry baskets recently. Well, it was, I don't know, maybe three months ago. That was the smartest thing I ever did was separating their dirty laundry hampers. So then I can just watch e wash each kid's clothes separately. They turned out so good. Actually, I'll show you guys in from the video footage because they turned out so nice. And I've got one of the dirty laundry baskets sitting over there is why I'm thinking about it. But it saved me literally hours um, having it clearly labeled whose is what. And it looks nice. So I don't have to worry about it like, you know, taking away from the look of the room or the hampers. or It just looks really organized and everybody has their own place for things. So as you can see... I'm just peeling away the excess. So it went ahead and it cut, and now we're starting to see what everything is gonna look like. And when we've got like the pea here, then I just take the weeder and I just kind of poke into it and then pull it off. And there we go. I think so far we're like five minutes in on this project. <laughs> I did want to show another option for material. They now have smart materials. This is their smart vinyl and it's pretty much the same thing except for it can be used without a mat which makes the project even easier. You just cut it to size just like the other but 
you leave out the mat and then when you're in the design space you just tell the computer that you're using it without the mat for smart materials and then it knows exactly what to do and it cuts everything out um the Cricut can be used with hundreds of different materials, but the smart materials are the most simple to use. So I just take each word and use their little scraper tool and I'll flatten the tape out over it. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and peel now the tape off and then it grabs the word. And then we'll just stick it on. There we go, one bin. Let's do this side too. So this side was gonna be the bigger, bigger writing. Seriously, I love this thing so much. It's like, you know when you have big ideas, but you can never seem to make them a reality? Like, you have an idea of you, how you want something to look, but it's so custom that you just can't like I cannot write, I can't, I don't have the handwriting to be able to make something like this. So to be able to dream it up and then just right away execute it, I love that. I love how the Cricut can just make it happen. There's something about the reveal part that's really fun. And then I do like to take the transfer tape and kind of flip it so the not sticky side is facing it and then just give it a quick rub. Make sure all the corners are nice and secure. So I've got one down, two more to go. Well, we definitely did it. I've got all of the bins done, they're labeled. I'm gonna head out to the market trailer and get everything moved in um, to these bins because I, you know, I did the empty ones and I'm gonna move the things over, the signs and cups and all of that so that we're all ready to go for a quick takedown and setup for next week's market. It's like with, your, with a farmer's market, the first year you're kind of like getting your legs under you and figuring out how you want it to go. And then second year is all about efficiencies. So I'm glad we're finally, finally <laughs> getting efficient here. And I'm gonna clean out my sign bin too. There's a lot of signs I'm not using anymore and I just wanna make it streamlined. And then after I get done with that, we're gonna go over, so the next time I see you, we're gonna go over to the other property we farm at and I wanna do the second half of this tour. I'm gonna change back into my harvest clothes. Um, and I'm gonna show you guys what we have blooming right now over there. Okay, so I've just pulled up to the other plot that I farm at. I do have a deer fence around the perimeter and I can see some dahlias like ready to harvest. So let's go have a look. I wanna show you guys around what's blooming and kind of my favorites for this time of year. Okay, so here's the overview. You can see I've got my line that goes up and over, down and then over. And I've got my dahlia rows here. So these are golden scepter. I've got a row here that's actually not doing great. We're having kind of some watering issues, but I've got my four rows of dahlias there. We've got zinnias, my cosmos. I've got a little mix of everything here. And my lisianthus, that's where we're gonna go first. So excited to show you those. And then the last little bits of our sunflowers are over here. Let's go get a closer look. We're up at the top of the hill now, and these are my lisianthus. If you know anything about lisianthus, you would know the one thing everybody, like the first thing you learn about them is that they take forever, <laughs> forever to grow. Like the height that I've got on these here, like there's quite a bit of length. And just to get like the tiniest, tiniest little bitty baby seedling takes like, I don't know, four months like it takes so long to get these guys going but once they're in the ground for a couple months then they well they pretty much look like they're doing nothing and then all of a sudden they start throwing out the buds and then look at these flowers they're like the closest thing to a rose um that i can grow like you know most roses commercially come from south america ecuador california even to get those really beautiful long stem roses. But Lysianthus have that very similar, like ruffly, beautiful petal, um, but I'm able to grow them here, which is amazing. Let me show you the ones that are a little bit more in bloom. Here they are. I'm actually gonna be harvesting some of these today. 
they are ah oh, so pretty and just on like this is one stem just on one stem look how many flowers we have so you've got your central flower this is the first one that blooms and then you kind of want to wait until you've got some more that are opening because if you pick them here they're not actually going to open you could still use them you know for designing and maybe even just chopping this little stem and using it for some texture i still use them but um, if you don't wait a bit then they won't all open this one i mean with three that are open you could even just chop off those and you've got three basically usable bits for an arrangement for a mixed bouquet um, i'd probably just put them in just all as one big beautiful flower oh man the center i just love if I'm doing like a bridal bouquet or something for a wedding, I do reflex these. So I kind of bend the petals out to give a little bit you know, of that pop of center. But they're just so beautiful. Once they're blooming, it's like, oh, totally worth the wait. Here's the whites. I believe these are the ABC white variety. These have more petals. So they open up and they're more roughly. And they also last a long, long time in the vase. So not only are they beautiful to look at, but they are some of the longest lasting. Like these guys will last two weeks in the vase, which is just amazing. And just look how big that is. I was trying to think of the best way to like systematically go row by row, but I think what might work best is just going flower by flower and showing you kind of what's blooming of each type. So those are the Lysianthus. Let's go with my um, pincushion flower next. Now I just did a huge harvest on these guys just a few days ago, but I love the seed pods and the actual flowers. Like all the stages of these are so fun. I've got both the pinks, I've got these blues. They almost look like a periwinkle. And then maybe even my favorite is these snow maiden, the white ones. They just go with everything. Anything I'm doing these work so fun behind it i had a ton of chamomile i planted all of this in hopes that i could use them for bouquets only to find out they don't hold in the vase so this is a ton of chamomile seed i'm actually going to collect that and um, use it at my other farm plot but yeah <laughs> sometimes you know it's kind of like you win some you lose some next up we've got the straw flower these guys are those amazing like they dry so well they almost sound like paper these are the silvery rose. Over here I've got this deeper, almost burgundy color. I grew these last year as well. I would say the red, these burgundy are not my favorite. If I was gonna cut it down to just a few I would be growing, it would definitely be the silvery rose. And then I have some more in another area down here. These are almost they're just more red red and orange some of them actually kind of look yellow this guy's pretty blown open like here these guys are definitely more of an orange these have been nicer in market bouquets i tend to go with things that are a little bit lighter and then while we're on the topic of kind of papery blooms these are my status i showed harvesting these in my last video um, these are such a crazy flower because again they have that like papery feel to them and they dry exactly how they are like when you hang them upside down for a few weeks they dry just like this and they stay with these intense colors they are really fun when i do these again i'm not gonna mix the colors up just because it's so difficult for harvesting you know to have a bucket of a mix of colors and then trying to sort them through is difficult They've been blooming amazing. And let me show you how the plant looks. The plant almost looks like a dandelion. It's this like flat, this flat thing. And then it sends up these long spikes. They're really interesting. So I've got this patch here, all of those. And then I also have another patch, some white ones up here. Further up, this is starting to look a bit like a mess, <laughs> but these are my fever few. I've got a little bit of a buttery yellow color and then these ones I actually preferred and these are more of like a nice bright white. I really love these for market bouquets. They add a lot of bulk and just some nice like just a nice smaller flower like comparing them to some of the zinnias I have over here. 
um, the size of these. They're not as big as those Benary Giants that are almost like a Dahlia, but between the larger Zinnias, the mid-sized Zinnias, and something like the Feverfew, it just has such a perfect like shape and size to make a, a really easily make a, a nice rounded market bouquet. And then down from the status, I've got this huge mass of Gomfrina. These almost look like little clovers and these also dry fantastic. They like exactly how they look right here. This is how they dry. If you get really close, you can kind of see they have like a little bloom inside there. See those little yellow little bits. I only grew this color Gomfrina and it wasn't on purpose. I, I thought I had like three types. I think I just didn't get around to starting the seeds on the others, but it's been very prolific. I have hacked into this bush. I mean, I think it'd get farther away, it's so big. I've just hacked into this bush and it just keeps putting out the blooms. Next door over here, I've got some really beautiful phlox. This is the cherry caramel phlox. As it sits out, like this one's pretty fresh here, just, just coming out and blooming. As it sits in the sun, it kind of gets a little bit bleached out and it works really well in so many different things. Over here, I've got some phlox that's bloomed out. Honestly, this one got away from me. Uh, I probably wouldn't grow this color again because I really liked those, the centers of the other color, but it, it is nice, like depending on what you're doing and what colors you want. I did prefer this white though. I prefer the white over this kind of antique color just because I felt like it was more versatile. Up the row a little bit more, I've got my asters. These have also kind of gotten away from me. I just don't love, like once they bloom, they have this center, or even if, you know, if I pick them more closed, as they kind of open up, they have this center that to me just looks dirty. Like it just looks like a bright kind of, I feel like the colors don't go very well and it doesn't look fresh. Like even if I pick them, you know, a little bit more closed, so I've kind of just let these guys go to the pollinators, <laughs> letting them have them. Haven't really been using them for bouquets. I mean, you know, in this stage, they're pretty. Like you can't see the center, but as soon as that center starts to pop, I just don't love them. <laughs> My eucalyptus over here, it's doing pretty well. They're definitely starting to kind of flop over. We've got kind of a water shortage over on this property. It's on farmer's irrigation with like a slew behind. They're, they are beautiful. I'm hoping to cover these so that they'll perennialize here and get better and better every year. This one, it's a different variety. This wasn't the seed I planted, but this guy's doing really well. Okay, let's venture a little bit closer to the dahlias. Um, we'll get to them in just one sec. This is my first time growing this plant. It just looked like the most wild, um, like look at this color. It's called Zanzibar or I think it's Carithalmus or something like that. It's the craziest plant. I've never seen anything like it. I haven't even harvested these yet because I just, I don't even know, like at what stage do you harvest? The first bloom is like this center one. So I let this bloom because there was nothing else. Like this is one stem here. There was just this one in the center that was turning yellow. And I was like, I don't know. Like, will these others open up? I don't know. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and harvest today and I'll cut out this central stem. But they are really fun. Um, I think for market bouquets, they'll add kind of like a tropical fun color. And these were the easiest seeds to start. Literally just one little seed in each of my landscape fabric holes, kept them watered and they didn't mind kind of the drought. So these are just the wildest fun little plant, big plant actually. I mean, look at this, like compared to my hand, this stem is so thick and all of these blooms just on one one little plant. Kind of like a, a foliage and like a little secondary bloom all in one. And then next door, these are my Cupcakes Cosmos. These guys are fantastic. I love them for market bouquets. I love them for wedding work. I mean, people look at these and they're just like, what is that? They look like a little cupcake wrapper. And if you're curious about where I got my seeds, um, this year, kind of knowing what I wanted, um, I went to Geo Seeds. A lot of them I've gotten from Johnny's, but as far as best pricing with worst 
<laughs> kind of worst customer experience, it would be Geo Seeds. If you know exactly what you're looking for and you just want to get a bunch of inexpensive seed, they are go-to. If you're still learning, and I mean, I still use Johnny's a lot too because they have certain varieties I can't find anywhere and there's so much information on their site. Um, Johnny's Seeds is really great too. These plants have just been doing so well. The Cosmos are really, really great. Just cut and come again. Every time I come out here, which is every two, three days to harvest, um, I've got just more and more. This is the first zinnia patch. These are some Venery's Giant uh, zinnias that are just absolutely amazing. The size on these, it's almost like a dahlia. Um, in size and kind of that shape. So like when you're designing, it's that really similar, like big round focal flower, but they are just, they're amazing. They have great vase life. They're beautiful. They come in so many different colors. I do really love, you know, the smaller zinnias too. Like these are the Zenderella. Um, I've got them in lilac, but these ones are, I think it's called apricot. These guys are really beautiful. Have kind of like a cupcake top and they come in varying shades. So like this one still has a lot of the pink, um, but some of the others are a little bit more yellow, buttercream. Over here, I've got some more of those zinnias. These guys are in like a lime color, a little bit chartreuse with some yellow. For my dahlia rose, so I've got one, two, three, four. They are kind of patchy as far as what is blooming right now. These guys are definitely um, the first that I've had to bloom and they're just pumping out. Even though the plants look fairly small, um, they are so easy to use in my market bouquets. And I think I've confused myself on the name of this one. So if you guys know it, um, leave it in the comments below because I thought it was Valley Tawny. Um, but I don't, I don't know if that's right. It almost looks like a cupcake and they can look different depending on like where they're growing in the sun. This is a different color, but how pretty. Dahlias just make a bouquet, like a market bouquet. They really just make it pop. The forum is just so perfect. Here's a couple of the whites. These are perfect size for some bridal bouquets. I'm hoping to use this actually next week. I've got wedding first week of September and I'm hoping to use those for it not those same blooms but the plant same plant here's a uh, golden scepter I love that they have that kind of deeper center and then the bright yellow a little bit smaller um, in bloom size than what I was hoping for just for market bouquets it's nice to have something you know this is kind of that standard zinnia size the smaller and for a bouquet I really like to have the bigger bigger dahlias. I mean for a market bouquet, not a bridal. This is perfect if you had a yellow bridal bouquet. And actually that wedding I have, we do want some yellow. So I might be using these for that too. There's just so much to show <laughs> over on this plot. Actually the neighbors have horses. So it's been, it's been really nice being over here, even though it's a drive from the house. Um, you know, some pretty good scenery and uh, it's always nice the neighbors are super sweet and I'll bring them a bouquet her neighbor even like mowed my I mean this neighbor even mowed the driveway for me earlier this year and they're super nice here I've got a row of snapdragons these guys are kind of on their way out I actually need to go through and do some deadheading because I missed some of them well to be honest a lot of them fell over I think I was showing that in my last video but a lot of them fell over because they weren't netted, but some of these are just, these Potomacs are amazing. Potomac Snapdragons. I have a few different varieties um, that I grew this year. These guys are a really neat sunset variety and they've made, like actually these will go really well with that Zanzibar that I showed you earlier in these kind of yellow orangey tones. I think that would be really pretty with some reds. Or even, I've got these Rudbeckia. Black-eyed Susans, these have been really fun. I have to be careful when I'm using them in market bouquets because if I go to fall, <laughs> when we're just in August, people are like, oh, we're not ready for fall yet. And so they'll avoid them. But if you do a nice mix, you know, with some whites and some pinks and they really add a neat depth, but still being bright and fun and summery, 
and these guys have been great. I think they would be blooming even better if they were getting watered better, but that's the struggle of this property here. Sunflowers, there's been so many um, that have been blooming. These are the double quick. I love these. They're a double, um, but the form of these, like the petal is just such a long pointy, and then it just looks like a teddy bear. Like it doesn't, it almost doesn't look real. They are really fun. And these could work for spring, summer, fall, whatever you want to put them with. A little bit further back, I've got some of uh, these chocolate sunflowers. These with the double quicks are really nice. I think this one, I don't know if this is a chocolate or like a pink lemonade. The chocolates have been fun. We had them for the first time last week and people really liked those. And it's interesting because the pro cuts are like a one cut sunflower. You cut it and then that's it. But these, my first succession, they actually bloomed again. And the, the thing is that the sunflowers are not as nice. Like they're not as uniform. They're kind of like weaker stems and they bloomed. You can see where I have that original cut there. And this is like it tried to side branch out. So I've just been leaving these for the bees, you know, keep the pollinators happy. But these original, the original ones of these were super sturdy and nice. I'm just leaving them in because I haven't been able to turn this bed into anything else quite yet. And like I said, it's good for the pollinators. Other flower that I've got growing here, these are some more um, yarrow. I do have these, like the cottage white ones at our home farm, but these, before they got all bleached out in the sun, <laughs> were like yellow and gold and red. I believe this is the Colorado mix here. So I had a lot of different colors. These I'm gonna just kind of let go this year and they will bloom again next year. These were some more Cosmos. And then down here I have more Asters. These ones I actually have been able to use. I'm not sure. I got one variety here and one then that was over there I showed you guys before. This variety I have been able to use easier. It doesn't pop the center quite the same as the other one. Kind of holds it longer. So these guys are really pretty. These are an Aster that I've been using. And see, like these ones here, I'm just not really a fan. It's a, it's the shape and it's that yucky, muddy yellow color. It's not my favorite. Deep in the weeds here, I've got some bunny tail grass. These have been just naturally sun drying and these are perfect for that upcoming September wedding. She wants some little dried, like things that dry well. I'm actually gonna take apart her bouquet and save some of the pieces that, um, that I know will dry well, and I'm gonna ship them back to her home address. So once they get back from honeymoon, they'll be able to um, get a little package, which is her bouquet all saved and beautiful. Just keep a little memento, which I think is really fun. This is one of my last few stragglers of Bells of Ireland from this year. I see a couple more over there. These are more of a spring, like an earlier summer um, crop here, but they have such a unique shape. They're fun to use for bouquets. You can let them dry and use them dried. And they almost have like a sour apple smell, like that green apple. Pretty cool. These were another early spring crop, um, but these are pink forget-me-nots. The color is, um, I think it's Chinese mystery rose. And they come in a blue color or these little pink dainty ones. These were really nice for market bouquets and for bridal work because they're such a tiny little like cute flower. They're just so fun and small. You can see these seed pods too that sort of, there we go, they sort of develop after the flowers are gone. So I'm actually letting some of these just stay uh, to see what'll happen if I can use them um, for other things too, like in the bouquets, but just as some greenery. There's another variety of Snapdragon from this year. This one is a little bit more of, it's like a, a lavender Snapdragon. I also grew this year these ones they have like a it's like a pink and then a almost an orange inside the throat there in the middle bit fun fact about snapdragons they can talk <laughs> um let's see oh there's some more over here too just as a comparison these are the purple that i just showed you this color um, and then this is a potomac lavender so the potomac lavender has that like little bit of yellow this one, I think this is, I'll have to put it on the screen, something legend or purple, I can't remember. But there's, you can see the difference. This one's a little bit more of white and that kind of almost a fluorescent lavender. 
And this one, the Potomac Lavender, is more of like a dusty purple. Subtle differences, but like if you're using this for a bridal, uh, very big difference if you're using it like that. So I've got two more things um, to show you guys that are kind of, I mean, you guys might have these as weeds just kind of growing up on the side of, you know, side of a field next to your property. These work so well for arrangements. They're called Queen Anne's Lace. Um, I also grow Dara, that's in another spot of the field. But I love the texture that these add to bouquets. Kind of having something like this just dancing up above the bouquet is so pretty. And this is like the perfect stage to harvest when they're, they're white. Um, but they're not like falling apart, like they're not dusty. And you'll notice on each stem, you've got different stages. So like you've got this, this stage here, which is kind of going to seed. You've got this one here that's fresh. So I just take one stem and take it apart for what I need it for. Got my little weedy tomato patch here, just these little baby tomatoes. These have been great for snacks. And then last thing I wanted to show you guys was my little basil patch. These have been pretty short still. Um, I need to go through and, um, you know, chop so I can encourage some new growth. But these are cinnamon basil. These smell so good. And then the next over row, these are, oh man, just touching them makes the whole area smell. These are Miss Burns Citrus Lemon Basil. These are fabulous. If you grow one thing that you can just direct seed, um, it would it should be basil i feel like we never grow enough filler and it is just so easy i mean i've got a whole this is about a third of a of a row like out of the whole row a third of a row of this basil and i will use everything that i can cut i can use in the beginning you know it's shorter so you got to keep cutting on it but once it starts to flower um the stuff is sturdy it lasts so well it can it can deal with once it's harvested and hydrated, it can deal with, you know, the heat of being in a, a house that doesn't have air conditioning. Same with zinnias. These are just amazing and they are long lasting. So I'm back from the other property. I did decide to go ahead and do a harvest while I was there because I was there and, you know, it's good to get things cut every couple days as they start to open up. And I mean, just the sheer quantity of what I was able to get, even if some of these were mismatched, you know, buckets. I mean, just like how much Cosmos, and I mean, I've got like three buckets of zinnias here, and then the dahlias too. I mean, these guys, you gotta get them while they're like at perfect stage so that you can include them in bouquets. So I'm gonna go ahead and get these guys in the cooler and then I'll walk you out back and I'll show you what they did yesterday with all the excavation and kind of walk you through what was there um, and what's coming. Okay, so this view, we're over by my strawberry beds here. And then that is the field that we were up on. There's the foxglove, my beehive, Peony Hill was over here. And this is where my 40 by 40 garden used to sit. Um, right now, there's a, they're building a rock ret retaining wall here. It was like 40 foot this way, 40 foot this way. Right now it's probably, I don't know, is that 100 feet? No, it's probably like 80. So the new tunnels or the first tunnels we've ever had are gonna go 50 feet long. They'll be 16 feet wide and then there'll be two. So one here and then one here, probably about 10 feet in between them. But they've been building this up. Over here it was, I mean, you can see how much they etched out. From this corner over here to where we are at was about five feet difference in grade. So they've been working really hard to get that all leveled out. I'll show you another view too. It's kind of an optical illusion because that is a hill um, and so flattening this out to be level so we can work on level ground was quite the uh, quite the dig. If you guys enjoyed today's video make sure you give it a thumbs up don't forget to subscribe and let me know also if you'd like to see a house build tour because like I said we're finally framing and maybe you guys would like to see a tour of that. All right see you guys soon.